I'm uh, Matthew DeMord. I'm with uh, Oak Ridge National Laboratory. And this is a uh, personal project that I put together about uh, receiving faxes with GNU Radio. So uh, specifically, WeatherFax. So WeatherFax is a system that was designed to send weather to ships when they're out to sea because uh, before the internet and stuff, you, you would need to know the weather so you didn't uh, crash or into like fog or uh, stuff like that. So they have locations around the world where they broadcast and you can receive on your ship and print it out. So uh, it uses radio facsimile or fax. So radio facsimile was invented in the 1900s and uh, basically it used, the early systems use a rotating drum and a pen plotter to print images. And uh, so there's two main frequencies, one for the, uh, the black pixels and one for the white pixels. And uh, usually they go 120 lines per minute or two lines per second. And uh, so here's a picture of an old fax machine. And so this is the hardware setup that I used. I used uh, an LNA and an up converter because it's uh, HF frequency to an RTL SDR and then to my laptop. And so the first thing I needed to do was to, uh, to make an antenna. So it's HF, so I couldn't use a, a look that you do in a dipole, but that would be very large or a, uh, a long wire or random wire. So I eventually decided to do a magnetic loop. And so the uh, Here's a diagram of the first antenna I built. So I, uh, I 3D printed a variable capacitor that I made. And so that seemed to work on the picture on the left. You can see the low capacitance, um, like 100 picofarads. And then moving it, you can get to like a couple hundred picofarads. And here's the, uh, the 3D printed uh, antenna. So I just designed circles. Uh, so there's the inner loop and the outer loop. And those are all just made of coax, and you can see the capacitor on the top. And uh, so that didn't work very well because I didn't have a uh, an antenna tuner, and I couldn't with, without any equipment. I didn't know what uh, frequency I was setting with the variable capacitor. So I ended up just going for a uh, just a U. It's called the the U loop is what I based it on. So it just has a uh, a one to one balance and basically a loop of coax. And so here's the, uh, the ballon that I wrapped out of a, an old TV ballon that I just took the, uh, the core out and rewound it. And then I'm not sure if uh, it helped, but the design for this antenna has like a crossover. So just you change the inner conductor to the outer conductor. And that's something that I added to the top. And here's a, a picture of it. And for the up converter, I use the the new elec uh, up converter, which just basically multiplies by uh, everything up by 100 megahertz. So I could actually pick it up because the direct sampling on the R RTL SDR was not good enough to to get a good signal. And so the S this is the SDR I used, just the uh, RTL SDR. And so. Here's a uh, picture of in GQRX of the signal. So it's at, uh, you can see that it's, uh, it's SSB uh, suppressed carrier. And so I decoded that using the uh, Weaver demodulation so I could get the audio out, so I could test it against known uh, fax decoding methods. So here's a block diagram. And uh, basically, um, I need to shift down the entire signal to uh, a lower frequency and then uh, demodulate with the, the weaver by multiplying the real and imaginary parts. And here's what it looks like in uh, GNU Radio. So I have uh, the input here and then going towards the, uh, the weaver block and then as an audio output. And then we come to the the actual fax decoding. So it uses automatic picture transmission, or APT, which is the same format that the NOAA satellites use, if anyone's familiar with those. So it just sends each pixel one at a time, and it's about five, half a second per line. And so 
like I said earlier, there's there's two main tones, 2400 uh, for the white pixels and 1500 for the, the black pixels. And for this, I just have the single sideband signal going into the a translating filter because I just wanted to uh, center it, center for the quadrature demodulation, and then uh, printing it out to a display. And so here's a picture of the, the translating and here's the, the GNU radio block diagram for it. And to make this whole thing work in GNU radio, I use the, the time raster sync just as like a, a printer, basically. So everything would print out in the, uh, the GUI. Here's some, here's some images that I decoded so you can see uh, the United States over here, and then here's Europe. I don't know if you guys can see my mouse or not, but you can kind of see. And then I'll show a, a video. So here you can hear the, the two tones going back and forth, and then the printout. And to actually align the image, so there's there's this black bar, which is the align. I just used a, a, a delay, so a time delay. So I'll just go ahead and, and realign it. And you can see the, uh, the NOAA symbol up here in the top. You can see the, the Great Lakes coming up in the middle. I can keep it running. Were there any, anyone had any questions? Uh, Hold on one sec. Let me get the mic. So is this system currently in use still? Uh, yes, yeah, so this system is currently in use, so you can uh, go on and uh, get a signal at any time. So there's certain intervals. So uh, that, that was one of the hard things during testing is I had to wait for a transmit time. So there's a, on the NO website, you can log in and see what times they're transmitting. And then it, it takes a long time to get the actual data. So I think it's about maybe like 10 minutes per, per map. So this one will keep going. I don't know if I have the complete recording and uh, the numbers that are on the map that corresponds to some kind of weather I believe these are uh, like wave height graphs so there's different ones like you can get um, you get ones for like temperature um, wave height tides or this might be a tidal chart I can't remember which one I decoded but there's uh, and depending on the year they have ice charts and that kind of stuff uh, last question. How similar is this to like a regular telephone fax machine? Um, I think it's like a very similar concept to the early ones. So it, in the beginning of like the, the facsimile and fax, they actually use just like your radio that you would have in your house and then you hook this up. And that's why it's using uh, AFSK in the audio frequency. But I think later on they, they changed uh, the modulation to something different. Um, hi, can you tell me what's the baud rate? Uh, 
Uh, not sure. I think it's. I'd have to look that up. I don't remember. Did you create a transmitter flow graph as well? I did not. Okay. I was hoping you could uh, tell me a little bit more about the 3D printing of capacitors, of variable capacitors. Okay. So I just designed uh, basically like a parallel plate and then with a slot in it, so it would just slide back and forth and I could continuously variable it, the uh, capacitance. Okay, did you use like a, a conductive uh, plastic or uh, I just alloy used, or I just used a conductive like tape like aluminum tape or copper tape okay okay would work um, and then I had one other question uh, I saw I saw you were using a, a quadrature demodulator to differentiate between the two tones did you consider or try using match filters and is there a reason uh, um, like a match filter for each tone and then comparing I just that's the way I just ended up doing it okay I immediately got the uh, the ones and zero from the quadrature mod, so it was easier to put it into the raster sync. But I can, I'll have to look at yeah, it. I was just curious if you'd tried that or not. I don't, I don't know if it would be better or worse. This is less a question and a statement. Uh, as a, uh, a credit to how easy it is, or can be how easy it is for to learn and use GNU Radio, um, this presentation was presented uh, when he, when uh, Matthew applied to come work at ORNL, and uh, we had put GNU Radio in our requisite, you know, our, our uh, advertisement for the job, and he had did not know GNU Radio. So to prove that he could uh, handle it, he went out, taught himself GNU Radio, built the antennas, and and presented this to us within two weeks. So <laughs> congrats to that. Thank you. Any other questions? Just say, uh, you know, can you read it? Maybe easy, but I mean, honestly, Matt, it's like really awesome that you were able to do something like that in two weeks. I don't know if I could do that, but it was great work. <laughs>